marshalling area and uh, you sit one through to four. First swimmer at the front, the anchor swimmer up the back. And uh, one of the Russian swimmers just stood up out of, uh, out of his chair and came across and stood in front of me in my chair. And he just started slapping himself and staring me down a bit. And I was, I've, I've come from um, a rugby league background in Australia. I don't know if you've ever seen or heard of rugby league. It's like a version of rugby union, a little rougher, a little more working class. And so I enjoy confrontation. Um, I come from a contact sport. And, uh, and so when he started somewhat in trying to intimidate me, that, that cheated me up. And I stood up and sort of told him what I thought of him. I don't know if he understood it because I said it in English. He was Russian, but I t- basically told him to, to back off. Nine one thousands, uh, three on 1030, three on 1015 and three on 10. And <laughs> uh, I, I did pretty well in that set and I was pretty happy about it. And so it was uh, Nessie. And then towards the end of the practice, because that we're obviously getting out last. Um, our whole team was like off to the side on our last 1,000 cheering us on. So it, it was a it, it was a good set for everybody there. And it was it was a lot of fun to do. Nice. Uh, what what did you end up going on that last 1,000? Do you remember? Uh, I was 8.59 on the last <sighs> one. <laughs> was, was that, was that, I mean, obviously that's a, a big bench, benchmark racing in a suit shaved and tapered but you know as you as you moved through that set were you like i think i can break nine minutes on this last one i did not think that at all it was hunter back finals and i was like getting hyped i was i was doing like jumping jacks high knees stuff like that like getting my blood going because it's like 10 minutes before my race and i wasn't going to jump in the water again to get warmed up so i'm doing all that and i'm wearing slides so i mean this is honestly like my fault like i should be like more cognizant of what I'm doing and stuff like that and be aware of my body. So I'm just like doing jumping jacks and stuff like that. And then I roll my ankle and it like, kind of like, wait, hold on something. And then it kind of like slips under me and I go, damn, I really just rolled my damn ankle. Okay. <laughs> and it's like hurting. I'm like limping a little bit. I'm like, okay, whatever. Like, I'm just going to go. Like, I'll just pretend it didn't happen. I go, I swim the hunter back. Like it was pretty good. Like I felt it a little bit during the race, stuff like that. I get out of the water and I look down And there's literally like a ball on my ankle. And I'm like, damn, I screwed up this time. A couple of whiles back in quarantine, like I saw something online where it's like, write down your goals and you're 40% more likely to achieve them. So I swam that and I actually came back to my house and I found the notebook and it actually said, um, I'm so excited. I went 56 at Greensboro. So I was like, oh my gosh, how cool. Um, So that was like insane. Um, but going into that meet, I, I wasn't really expecting anything. It was long course, first long course meet. I'd done one before, but this was like big. So, um, I was just, it was a different pool. It was at GAC instead of TAC where I normally swim. Um, and everything, I just, the stars aligned and it was perfect. It was a perfect race. I don't know if the stars aligned. Now, if I heard you correctly, you wrote this down and you Mm -hmm. wrote it down in like in past tense, like it already happened. Is that correct? Yeah. I saw it online. You were supposed to write it down. Like it it happened. So everyone was buying these bikes to ride to the dining hall, to ride around the village. So they were like kind of saving their legs a little bit more. As a 16 year old, I was like, Oh my God, this is awesome. Like I want one of these bikes. And I think it it was like the the afternoon before the relay. So I must have, have, have swum in the morning and then just like rested for the rest of the day. And girls in my apartment were going out, um, were like, they were running in and I was like, oh, where are you guys going? And they were like, oh, we're going to go buy bikes. There's a guy, a guy would come to like one of the village gates with like a van of bicycles and you could just buy them from him and he'd just (laughs) give you one. So I was like, oh my God, I'm coming. Like I want a bike too. Obviously I hadn't finished swimming, but everyone else had. So we were like running out of our apartment, running to the gate and we get there and the guy's like, oh, I've run out of bikes. He was like, but I can take you to my shop. It was in San Diego for the first like Phelps shoot that I did. And it was super awesome meeting him. Like he was very personable and very friendly. Like the second I met him, it felt like I had known him for a while and we got to go for like dinner and kind of talk about just like my swim career, his swim career, my 
personal life, his personal life. And it was just nice to relate to someone a little bit. Like, I feel like I haven't been able to talk to a lot of swimmers that have been in the position that I've been in. And I mean, it's like, I don't know who else is better to get advice from than like Michael Phelps. I mean, so I'm just like really appreciative of like him even giving me his time and sitting down to talk to me and giving me his phone number to call him or text him when I need. And he's a really, really nice guy. So the first week, like I said, Jack pumped the brakes for us before the first match. Then after the second match that Monday, yeah, then we just got that Georgia threshold, long course, love. I'm like, dude, like we have to race. Like, come on, you know, we're, uh, we got a trophy on the left, you know, but no, it was nothing like that. So we did, we did threshold that Monday. The next day we did fast, easy. These were all long course. We had long course, long course, long course, long course, long course, long course. And then, um, uh, what do we, what do we do the next? Then we had like a pace day. We had KDS kick drill swim, which is a, you know, that was that 50 set 16 fifties like that, uh, two days before, either the third or fourth match. And I like look up at my coach. I'm like, okay, so is this going to be like 200 pace for the first round, you know, like plus two, right. Then plus one, then at, and then under. And he's like, no, they're all max. I went at least a thousand, I would say at least 800 meters off course because it was so narrow. I lost sight of what I was supposed to be sighting because I couldn't see the buoy. And I led the whole entire lead pack off course. And the, um, the two people that beat me were the ones that did not follow the main pack. So they were in last and then they ended up getting first because <laughs> they did not go off course. Yeah. So I, I realized it when I looked over and I was like, I can't find any of the buoys. I looked to my right 90 degrees and the buoy was over there. So I had to sprint. I take off sprinting. I sprint the last two laps and I end up passing. There was a girl in front of me. So there was three people in front of me and I ended up passing the one at the, like with maybe 10 meters left to finish. So, and ended up getting the bronze medal. I remember Bob Bowman, Michael Phelps' coach. He goes, you know, this sucks. And I was like, what do you mean? That you're up here watching the 100 freestyle and the relays because you can't get your training together. And I'm like, oh, ouch. And Bob, I have that relationship with Bob. Bob would pull me aside and, and tell me the real. Um, I get home, my mom says to me, you know, what was that? <laughs> after I swam and you've met my mom she's such a nice lady but she doesn't even know my times which, all, all, you know, all the pillars in your life David Mark surrogate dad Bob Bowman who's a titan Bob and then your mom yeah. they, that's, oh, everybody that's awful. yes and so here I am it's now August I'm back home and I remember I went to national swam terribly and David's like all right Training starts right now after this 50 free that you bombed. Go do a two mile run. The sub 20 challenge is December 10th, 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And you are going to suit up, you're gonna tech up, and you're gonna go for the sub 20 seconds in the 50 meter freestyle. Who talked you into this? Actually, Troy, of all people, uh, Speedo, Speedo's idea, and Troy, Troy loved it. Dude, Troy was all all over it. So when Troy pitched it to me, thought it was a good idea, thought it was going to be fun, uh, and I agree. I mean, I, dude, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I've never gotten a chance to to race in the in the super suits. I was too much too young. So looking forward to it, stepping up, seeing what I can go. Uh, I, I don't know what expectation I have. I know the sub twenty has a nice ring to it, but who knows where I'm going to be at right now. I have no idea. Uh, I just know it's going to be it's going to be a good time to take that that historic iconic suit and bring it into modern day with the 20 year anniversary of the laser and you know just try to try to do my thing and have a good time doing it.